We're about to put the hole into the bench apron to receive the draw. That's what we're going to do. We're going to build the framework that supports the draw and then we're going to make the draw to fit into it. But the thing that governs everything is going to be the size of the hole. So I'm going to show you how I've positioned mine. I've positioned it six inches from the vise. I find that very convenient, very comfortable. I didn't want it to infringe on my saw area. So I kind of restrained it to 12 inches wide. I think that's a good width for a draw. It goes from one apron to the other apron, so it's a good deep draw. I've got plenty of room. How I establish the position, the exact cut lines for this, I'm gone six inches from the vise, so that's where my first line goes. To get the uh, exact top of the draw, I've gone to the underside of the bench top. I've got to get that right. To do that, I slide this square in here, slacken this off, press this down, till it hits the top side of the bench there. And I'm going to check myself on this side to make sure I'm still parallel, and I am. So I come here now with my pencil and pull, oops, broke my tip, there we go. Pull that pencil line along here. That's given me the exact position of the top of the drawer. The bottom of the drawer is four inches down, so I've made it four inches deep. You can make it deeper if you like, but the deeper it goes, the more stuff you put in it. So there, I'm already put these lines on so I could see where I was going. So that one's parallel. So I've got this one made, and then the exact distance from the width is the 12 inches, as I said. So there's my 12 inch mark. I'm ready to cut. So how do I cut this? What I did is, you can do this, there's different ways you can do it. You can just chop and cut, chop and cut with a chisel, or you can put a series of holes in, which is what I prefer to do. So to do that, I'm going to use a stick of wood and a couple of clamps along this one area here. So I'm clamping this to the other side of the apron, uh, of the bench top, on my line there, and onto this side here. That's it, cinch it tight. So now I can run. I'm gonna use an electric drill with a quarter inch bit in here. And I'm gonna let it lie on here and just run it into that corner first. This is just to ensure that I'm not drilling into the main bench top area. And you can run these along as close as you like. Like this. All the way along. Or you can go part way if you like. What I'm gonna do is, go, I'm gonna stop there because I'm going to go in now with a stab saw or a saw like this, the one with the point on, but you can't always get straight in there. so. You may have to chisel out the first bit. So just lie this along that piece of wood and chisel out some of that waste. And use the, the rim of this piece of wood as you guide. Until you can get the uh, compass saw in there, if you've got a compass saw. I'm nearly through. You know, narrow a chisel just to get some of this waste out. And then we can put the saw in and that makes it a lot quicker. 
see if we've got a place here. Can we do? And don't worry about getting it dead on the line because we can go in and pair cut afterwards. You might want to go with a, a regular handsaw on the inside. So we just work around the rim of the, or the perimeter of the hole this way. Let's see if this will go. Just gently stab at it. bulk of the waste holes. Just the same way so we can put this on here. That's the way you wish you had another pair of hammers. Make sure this is square. Well, I'm dead on my line there. Definitely gets the heart beating if you have a heart. So we're going to drill another series of holes here. Make sure you're not moving your board when you're doing this chiseling because that can cause a problem. I'm going to chisel now from the inside if I can. No, I can't. It's too, too complicated. So what I'm going to do is take my drill just drill in at an angle just so I can give the hole saw a start, the compass saw. And that 
that's me down. So I'm going to do exactly the same for the other two, the long and the short, and then there'll be the centre part will come away and then I can pair cut the remaining wood. <laughs> been cleaning up the rim of the hole here I've used this guide to run my chisel along here and just pair cutting down to the line to take this out but I've got some something I want to show you while I'm in this area here so just pair cut use this as the rim and just use a corner of your chisel to pair that waste wood down to the underside of the bench top need to take a little saw cut in here I think So that makes it nice and neat on the underside. So you can't get a plane in, that's the underside of the bench top there. And you don't need to get a plane in it, that will be plenty close enough. enough. Now I want to show you something here, on this one I did use a knife wall, but this one I forgot, I didn't use a knife wall, I should have used a knife wall, I'm always telling you to use a knife wall and I didn't do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the width of my drawer enough to get rid of these little tiny chips here that came off the edge when I was drilling. And I'm going to bring a knife wall up this side here and I can drop my chisel in there. I shouldn't have done that, should I? So, go on to the corner, make a nick. You can transfer to the inside and you can work from both sides. So you have a knife wall both sides to work to. Now then. Not much room in here. here on the, knife, on the knife wall and I'm going to change between my chisel and the rasp. The chisel will give me the nice crisp line on the outside like this. Can chisel from the inside but I'm careful not to come onto that outside face because it will split off where I don't want it to. You're about halfway If you don't have a rasp, you'll have to go with your chisel. And that's how that's done. This bottom edge I'm going to do when I flip the bench over and I'm ready to run my runners set out for that because I'll find it easier to go from the top pressing down rather than trying to push from the underside. I've just paired up the sides and the top and I'm just pairing up the, the bottom rim here so the drawer will sit at this level. This is the final level. I've got a big old knot right in the middle here. Not always easy to pair cut. 
if the knot works, then the surrounding grain usually doesn't. If you do hit a knot, the surrounding grain causes you a problem. If the wood is too thick here, just raise your chisel a little and, and use it as if you were planing, going down gradually. So the grain is telling me go the opposite direction, which isn't always easy or even possible. So you just manipulate a chisel. This is nice and smooth level. I've got it where I want it to be. A little bit on this side wall here, on the inside corner. Often the inside won't look as neat as you would like it, but it's never going to be seen. I'm not sure if I would worry too much. So that's that. Now I've got to take my bearer. This is a bearer that supports the, the draw runners. And I'm going to cut this to length. This one is already cut to length. The clamp is in the way. But I'm going to cut that. We've got to put some notches in there. And when we put the notches in, we're ready to run the runners in. This bearer I already cut to length and what I did is just, a, I kept it as long as I could. It goes between the wedge and the, um, the drop down button that holds the wedge in place and the vise. So I've just left it as long as I could and uh, I'm happy with that. So what I want to do with this now is I want to just mark, I just want to mark this inside corner here and the inside corner of this one because that's going to give me the position I need for a recess that's going to go into here. So I'm going to make a recess into this side, make a recess into this side, match it up to this one, cut the recesses, and then the runners will go in there. That's these long pieces of wood that will go inside that recess from the back of the apron on the other side to the back of the, or the inside of the apron on this side. And then I'm going to put another piece of wood on top of that that will stop the draw from slewing from side to side. So it will be the guide that I need to keep the draw centered and square to the main apron. This is my runner. And what I'm gonna do is I want the runner to be somewhere. This is the, the center line of, uh, of, this is the side of the wall here. And I want it to be on the inside about five eighths. So if you make a mark here, five eighths of an inch, set it on here, that will give me the position of the inside and outside of my recess. The same on this second mark. So if I do the same, I'm gonna move this to the other end like this. Five eighths, half an inch, whatever your wood is. I've used different scrap wood from pallets to do this. I'm going to put these two together. Now these will be exactly parallel. So I'm going to actually make my markings across the two. These inside need to be at the exact same distance. Like that. And these are going to be screwed in place, so they don't technically need to be tight. They can be just snug. They don't have to be tight at all because the screws are going to hold them. There's my second wall. So we're guaranteed to be parallel, and that's the most important thing because you draw it's going to be parallel. We cut one notch, so what do we do now? We've got to get the depth. So bring your knife wall down onto this face here. None of this is going to be seen when it's finished. Bring your knife walls down onto those sides, both sides, and then run a gauge line between. And that gauge line, I know this is obvious, but the gauge line is the thickness of that piece of wood.
and run the gauge line here. And here. Now I'm ready to screw that in there, but I'm going to cut the other notches and that will be the notches ready to assemble this and put it underneath the bench. There's nothing complicated about this next bit because we've made this, we've got the joinery done. All we have to do now is cut things to length, screw them together. Now I'm not gluing any part of mine because I may want to change something at some later date. I want the length of the distance between the inside of the apron and the back of this apron too. So I'm going to just make a mark on the underside of here. Now it may be different on this other side, so we'll have to check that. What I'm going to do is reduce this by a sixteenth or a thirty-second, something like that. I want it to be slightly less than that distance because I don't need it to be tight in between. And this guarantees or helps me to guarantee that this carriage is going to go into the recess without too much of an obstruction because the screws are what are going to hold it and the screws are going to pull everything tight. There's one. So this is going to go in here now drops down quite easily. That goes there. This is the back one. And this is the front one. So this will be forming this right hand side. I'm going to do the same on this one. So I've started off with a square end, sliding it up to the apron. Close enough. Make a mark. Square the line across one thirty second 
to a sixteenth shy of that line. And that drops in here. And now we're actually forming a frame like that. just pop a hole through here. Oh, as I said, you don't need to glue it, it's not necessary. Drop those screws into there. This one, just keep it flush so that the back rail is just going to be slightly shy of the inside of the apron. It just makes it easier, that's all. There's the frame. This is going to go inside here. But before I do that, I'm going to put a drill, just drill a couple of holes in here, just to take, so I can screw this into place. Same on this side. Anywhere you can get the screw. Slide this in. Oh, we're going to slide it in. Hang on. We can put the top pieces on here. We can cut these to length as well. These guides for the runners. So let's go ahead and cut those because we won't be able to get in with a screw gun after. So we're going to drill these from the top. those. Mark this one again from this side just in case there's a discrepancy. You can leave them shy, you could leave them short half an inch if you want to, there's no real reason for them to go all the way to the back. Drop that one off. A couple of holes in the top. We do want from on the carriage, we want the exact distance, so the exact position of these on top of that carriage. So I'm going to check this, I'm going to put this inside here, lift it up into position. And I'm going to nudge it with the hammer to get the overhang I want on the inside here. So I've got this fairly centered now where I want it. I'm going to make a mark here and a mark on this side and that's going to be the side of the draw. So all I've got to do now is screw those to those lines
ready to anchor this thing permanently in its new home. So what you ought to do is get the square, square the line down here, and then you can take this distance, just use your finger as a finger guide, or you can set a gauge if you like, just take your finger and run this along here like that, the same on this one here, we've got the exact position we want. This comes up here. That's the side of the drawer. And these are the runners that are going to guide that drawer for the next 100 years. You can leave this, you leave it just off the line at the back so the back is slightly wider but no more than a mill on each side if you want to. I'd rather keep mine parallel but you can do that, that's not an uncommon practice. And that's enough for me to feel confident that I've got a solid support for my rail. I need a couple of screws to fix this inside. So what am I going to do? Am I going to measure the inside? And probably not. What I'm going to do is take a stem off one of these and mark this. So I'm going to the underside of the bench this time here. So it's nice and solid, snug up against there and I'm going to mark it here. That should be four inches. And what we'll do is we'll check that. So there is just like a 30 second on this. So I'm going to cut that off, square it first, and use that to push up again. So that will be between the frame and the underside of the well at the far side. So I don't have any measuring to do at the other end of this. Uh -uh, hang on, make sure I get the right one. This goes under here. And up into the opening. This side's ready to screw, so I'm going to go ahead and screw that. I've got the runner to the side of the drawer opening on both sides, just about. So I can go ahead and drive these screws on the underside of here. Can't find the hole. Great. 
this back one. use the apron front on here to guide me and tap this till it's square. Now the nice thing about this is this is square now but if it's if the draw isn't dead square you can always micro adjust this until it fits when you've done. It. There's not much else for me to do. Now I just have to make the draw.